party wagon and hold on to your pizza. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, issue number 15. Story by Kevin Eastman and Tom Waltz. Script by Tom Waltz. Art by Andy Kuhn. Colors by Rhonda Pattinson. And letters by Sean Lee. We start out in the lab where we see a snapping turtle. Someone's hand is reaching into the terrarium. And we've got some of the scientists who are here. 14 months ago, StockGen Research, Incorporated Laboratories. Okay, I'm grabbing specimen six. Are you ready with the injection, Chet? R ready him, Lindsay. You're going to have to hurry. This little guy's a mean sucker. As he injects him in the leg. All done. Now let's see how he takes to the injection. I'm not really thrilled about using an impure dose like this, but what the boss wants, the boss gets, right? How were you able to talk Hob into letting you draw blood from him, by the way? Oh, that. Uh, I included a su surprise ingredient in his lunch. Show a picture of Hob passed out after eating his lunch 13 months ago. Hmm, how very interesting. We see now the snapping turtle in terrarium has tripled in size, and he's looking at a... Uh, at a mouse in there underneath his palm tree, and he, you just see him say, Hungry, as if he's thinking it. The growth rate is remarkable, though didn't we conclude that Mr. Hobbs mutation and those of the turtles and rodents occurred much faster? Says Baxter. Y yes, Dr. Stockman, I've hypothesized that the lower intensity doses of mutagen injected into specimen six is slowing the rate yes 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 mr allen i'm sure that's all very fascinating and important i'll be certain to read it in your report when you turn it in it will take far less time than listening to your wretched stutter i don't doubt how goes progress with the psi control programming hmm when will we begin conditioning this creature to hunt other mutants we see the straight on face of the snapping turtle hunt we can hear it think now the other researcher says Actually, very soon, Doctor. I'm nearly done with it, with the coding, and we should be able to integrate beta testing in Specimen 6 once it's moved to a larger containment unit downstairs. Excellent! Just a matter of time now until we learn if it's indeed possible to teach the proverbial old dog some new tricks. The last image is of the snapping turtle with the, uh, the mouse's foot and tail hanging out, and it says, Eat. Nine months ago, a security guard crashes through a glass window. It's killing Burns! Light him up! A crew of security, all armored out with electric uh, shock tasers, are trying to take on who we now see is Slash. They blast him and end up hitting Burns as well. Burns falls down with a thud and so does Slash to the ground after all that electricity. All right, it's down. Let's get Burns to the infirmary ASAP. And that damn turtle moves an inch, blow it to kingdom come. Where the hell's that idiot Alan? Here, here I am. Damn it, man. This is the third time we've had to put this thing down this week. Every time it gets worse. When are you eggheads going to get it under control? We, 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 we thought that we had this time with a side control but manipulation. It seems that we'd be having a proper effect. But we just haven't b been able to synchronize the, the mental and physical d d development rates. It, this is what we believe is causing Specimen 6 um, instability. All right. All that gibberish I heard, this damn thing's got a huge body and a puny brain. You geniuses got no clue how to keep it from tearing this place apart. Y yes, that's fairly an accurate summation. Though you are working on the solution. Work faster, because we gotta go up against Frank and Turtle again. We're not pulling any punches. Fix it, or we take that monster down for good. We see Slash now say, Monster. As his eyes are just halfway open. Two weeks ago, it looks like a some sort of capsule that's been exploded and it says failure experiment on it. Some green ooze on the floor and just an unconscious stone warrior in the shadow of Slash. Then we fast forward to last night. Knock, knock, knock. The Mikester! Bump it, baby! Hey, Woody! Whoa, why so glum, chum? It's nothing. It's just some of these things with Master Splinter. Your dad? What's up with that old rat man? It's just like some ninja stuff. Ninja stuff? Like kung fu fighting? Yeah, that and some other worse stuff that we might have to do. It sucks. Look, man, I don't pretend to understand what's going on with you bros and what you're up to. I'm just a pizza guy. But I do know a good heart when I see one, and yours is as good as they come, Mike. Keep the positive energy flowing. Listen to your good heart of yours, and then things will work out just fine. You'll see. I hope so. Besides, you always got old Woody's kick butt of pizza pies to cheer you up, uh? Righteous. Thanks, man. Don't mention it. See you tomorrow. Same pizza time. Same pizza station, says Woody. Then all of a sudden we hear, 
after Mikey's left. Mikester! Mikester, that you, man? You forget something? Need me to hunt down some napkins? Hunt! Slash pops out of the garbage can with a... Ah! And Woody's just taken aback. He's like, ah! Now, current day, when we focus on two policemen. Cripes, will you look at that mess, will you? Yeah, it's the third scene this week. I've been to this week the same witness descriptions, too. Big green lizard monster? Exactly. Can you believe it? I don't know what to believe. Only man is what the mayor wants, and that's stopping this big green thing, whatever the hell it is. Yeah, well, by whatever means necessary. According to Chief, deadly force is authorized. You guys hear that? Yep, deadly force authorized. Actually, I was thinking about the big green lizard part. Well, the deadly force thing is pretty bad, too. Yeah, now every cop in the city is going to be looking to cap someone who looks just like us. April thinks it's got to be that specimen that escaped from Stockton the night that she snagged the turtle tracker for us. I think she's right. This is an allusion back to the micro-series uh, issue for April. You say specimen, Don, but the cops say monster. Big difference, if you ask me. Well, escape specimen or giant rampaging reptile, it's official. We need a new layer, like now. And the sooner the better. Even if you can block the trackers, we need to get ourselves underground again. We're way too exposed at April's shop. And if we get spotted by the cops, we're going to get blamed for this, says Leonardo. I just hope you got us going in the right way, Donnie. I gotta be back before 8 so I can ride with Casey and April to the hockey game tonight. I know, Raph. You've already reminded me like 10 times. Hey, the dude finally gets his grades up enough to play, and I want to be there to cheer him on, okay? No, it's cool, man. This place isn't that far from here. An old abandoned church about five blocks up. There's some kind of bunker underneath it? A nuclear bomb shelter, to be exact. April and I found some old articles online about underground shelters that they were built during the Cold War. But this one was going to be put there sometime in the 60s by the parishioners of the church sitting right on top of it. The church has been shut down for a long time, but according to these blueprints April dug up, the shelter should still be there. I hope it is. That way maybe we can avoid having to knock heads with the Shredder for a while. You still worrying about Father destroying Shredder Manifesto, Mikey? No offense, Don, but I hate it when you call it that. It is what it is, bro. No point dwelling on something you can't control. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. That doesn't make me feel better. I know we're ninjas and all, but I don't want to get too extreme. We are talking about the Shredder here. You know the maniac who's not going to rest until he has all of their heads on his mantle for trophies? As much as it sucks, the DSM is a logical response to an impossible situation. Maybe, but what's the point of being reincarnated and changed if we still gotta fight like we're in olden times Japan? Look, if this bunker checks out, nobody's gonna be able to find us, and maybe the DSM becomes a non-issue, okay? Whatever. As long as we get back in time for dinner, I'll be happy even if it's Sensei doing the cooking. What? No pizzas? Nope. I stopped at Woody's shop earlier to say hi, but I guess he wasn't there. Guess he got the night off or something. Well, I can say is really hope dinner's something new tonight. I mean, I'd never say it to his face, but if there's one thing I'm more sick of than Mikey's pizzas, it's father's salty vegetables and rice. Ah, vegetables and rice. Good for the body, good for the soul, Casey Jones. Uh, yeah, Master Splinter, if you'll say so. Back to the, uh, the lair where we have... This is actually in April's, uh... In April's shop, where we have splinters cooking in a wok, and uh, Casey is taping up one of his uh, hockey sticks. Oh, would you please be so kind as to turn on the television? My program will be on soon. Today, Dr. Philip Anson may come out of his coma, only to learn that his new wife is, in fact, his own stepsister. A sordid affair, indeed. You know, my mom used to watch soaps, too, when she was, well, you know, a mom. Seems to me like you being an ancient ninja master and all... You'd find this stuff kind of, I don't know, ridiculous. Ridiculous, says Splinter as he turns around, tasting his food from a giant wooden spoon, and he has a apron that says, I walk, therefore I am, with a picture of a yam on it in an apron. Casey turns back, and again, maybe not. Another incident in what now is a second week of mysterious vandalism, assault, and theft taking place in the city, including various reports of missing pets. We see that there's a graphic on here, and the uh, reporter Frank White for Channel 7, has something that says Slash Spree. According to the police, an unidentified individual viciously accosted an employee at a small pizzeria late last night. Though the victim suffered only minor injuries, he was severely traumatized and is being treated for shock. The latest attack appears to be part of a recent destructive spree several witnesses have described a lizard-like creature of immense size. 
Some citizens have begun calling the mystery vandal Slash in reference to the severe slashing damage caused to the property during many of the incidents. You guys are not going to believe what happened to my van. What is it, Miss April O'Neil? I have a flat tire and something else. A flat ain't that big deal. April, come on, let's go check it out. Whoa. We see her, her van is just looks like it's been shredded on the back. And it looks like it's four huge claw marks that go in from the back quarter panel all the way through the tires. I don't think it was an accident, Casey. Yeah, that looks pretty deliberate to me, don't you think? It's the Slash Monster they're talking about on the news, isn't it? Yes, I do. Remember how I said I got something out of stock, Jen? Well, based on the size of that container, it was something that was really, really big. And obviously extremely violent and dangerous. I'm pretty certain that's what's running around the city. I think it's hunting. And crazy as it sounds, I think it's hunting us. Well, hopefully the cops get it before it gets any of us. And if it can do this to your van, imagine what it could do to a person. Or a turtle. Yeah. We all need to be watching our backs big time. Well, we see it looks like a mugging taking place with two punks uh, picking on an older man with a mustache. Help somebody! Shut up, geezer, and hand over your mu- Ah! Looks like a throwing star comes right in front of his face into a telephone pole. I suggest you leave that elderly gentleman be, says Leonardo. Oh man, Leo, we don't have time for this. Casey's game, remember? Don't worry, Raph. I doubt this will take long. Jimmy and Simon and slash things. Waste them. Shoots a gun at Leo and he ducks it. He sweeps under with his leg, swords drawn, and knocks the uh, assailant down. Donnie is right there to hit him dead center of the chest with his staff. With a whoop. Ah, the other one pulls out a knife and tries to swipe at Michelangelo, who ducks out of the way easily. Raph comes up behind with a bear hug maneuver as Mikey leaps to the air, landing full force on top of his head with a kick. So they have been readily handled. The old man looks, Oh God, slash monsters! Help, police, monsters! Great idea, Leo. I, um, look, I like busting thug heads as much as the next guy, but if this guy makes me miss Casey's game, your head's next on my list, Leo. Forget heads. Those guys we thought, thought we were slash monsters, which only proves we gotta get our butts out of sight. Taking on dumb muggers is one thing, but the NYPD? No, thank you, says Donnie, into the shadows behind it. <laughs> smell. Smell. We can see Slash's shadow as his silhouette comes into view behind the two downed muggers. <laughs> smell them. <laughs> turtles. As the turtles are jumping off overhead, he sees them jump, and he can see that, that they have their uh, masks and such. He rips off the t-shirt from the larger of the assailant. It's a black sleeveless thing. He takes it, then he puts it on himself so he has a black bandana. As he ties it on, and he looks above, and he says, Pray. So Slash is on the hunt. To the old church now. Guys, this is it. Um, I thought you said this place was holy, Donnie. Not holy. <laughs> Very funny, Mike. I told you it was abandoned a long time ago, but hey, that works perfectly for us, right? Who'd come looking for us here? A wrecking ball crew, says Raph. Suddenly everyone's a comedian. Sheesh. They're just teasing you, Don. Still, we need to be ready for anything. I once read that samurais entered every room like the roof might cave in any second. Did that book say whether the old samurai dudes did about giant spiders? Says Mikey, moving some cobwebs out of the way. Here's the entrance to the old bomb shelter, exactly like the plan said. This shelter of yours must be good, Donnie, because a nuclear bomb definitely went off in this joint. Man, it's super dark down there. Who wants to go first? They all look at Don. Fine. Wimps. Okay, that's one small step for turtles. And one giant leap for turtle kind? Whoa. Guys, hurry, you gotta see this. After you, old great leader. Whatever. Man, I hope there's no nuclear spires down there. Holy. I told you, awesome, right? I definitely was not expecting this. Yeah, it's a big underground rec room. You know, for, like, nuclear bombs and stuff. This place was built at least 50 parishioners, and to sustain them long term, so I'm guessing we'll find all the basic living necessities down here. What about power, genius? There's probably a diesel generator somewhere, plus it wouldn't be that hard to tap into the city's electrical grid and get things running again. Check it out. There's stairs down here. Makes sense. According to the blueprints, the bunker consists of four or five levels going all the way down to a sewer access tunnel. The levels right below us are probably for storage and sleeping and things like that. Well, I got to admit, Donnie, I had my doubts, but this is not bad. Yeah, totally creepy, but not bad. Not bad. Guys, this is everything we need and more. 
With a little work, this place is going to be perfect. We've been looking for a new home, and as far as I'm concerned, our search is over. We see, looks like Slash coming into the uh, church, or possibly the sewer, and he goes, Search over. The turtles now are looking down into the lower levels, having gone down the stairs. Yep, there's a sewer tunnel, just like you said, Donnie. Where do you think it goes? I'm guessing it goes out to the river. We'll have to investigate. It seems more than likeliest. All right, before we start throwing a big homecoming party, can we get our rears back to the shop? Between Leo's stupid superhero and Donnie, the talking tour guide, I'm officially running late for Casey's game now, says Raph. Sure, Raph. I think we've seen what we need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are those stairs we came down anyway? I thought they were over this way. Nope. Maybe over here, huh? Donnie. Donnie, if you got us lost, I'm telling Dad. Shut up, Mikey. I'm pretty sure they're over. Panels over to the stairs to see Slash. Here. In a big, sort of scary, menacing way as he's looking at the turtles like he's going to jump and pounce on them. With a, a swipe of his claw, he knocks down Donnie with the flashlight. With a whoop. What the hell? Says Raph. What is that? Says Leo. With a grrr. Now with his face only showing from Leo's flashlight as he attacks Leo's flashlight now and knocks it out. It's some kind of monster! Grab the flashlight! Monster! It's a nuclear spider! Says Mikey. Just get the damn flashlight, Mikey! Aw, oh, crud! He pops Mikey and knocks him back on his, on his shell. Guys, look out! As Michelangelo shines the flashlight on Donatello, he can see that Slash is there who swipes at Donatello who barely gets out of the way. Leonardo says, Mikey, keep the light on that damn thing! Donatello swipes back with his staff and the monster blocks it with a high block. Then returns his swipe and uppercuts Donatello to the ground. Yeah, Leonardo rushes in with sort of a, a shoulder tackle just to knock it down. Okay, now I'm ticked off, says Raphael. Guys, keep moving. It's too strong and fast, so stay evasive. We don't want to take it head on, says Leo as he's right in front of him. Yes, we do, says as he smashes the flashlight right over his head. Then he's thrown to the ground in a quick response from Slash. Raph, no, says Leo. All of a sudden, <coughs> he's grabbed by the neck by Slash. Leo, where are you? Mikey looks around with a flashlight, and then he pans over to see Slash, who has defeated Donatello, Raphael, and is holding Leo. Mikey, help me. Oh, no. And that's the end of issue 15. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, issue 16. Story by Kevin Eastman and Tom Waltz. Script by Tom Waltz, with art by Andy Kuhn. Colors by Rhonda Pattinson and letters by Sean Lee. We pick up just where we left off with Leo in the clutches of Slash. It looks like he's about to make a uh, killing stroke to him, holding him by the neck when he's... And Slash is going... Mikey goes, Leo! Mikey, hold on, bro! Mikey has a uh, serious look on his face and begins to spin the nunchucks. And he goes, and he goes, I'm coming! Smacks him on the back of the head right in a tender spot, releasing Leonardo and smashing Slash to the floor. Slash responds with a hurt. Thanks, Mike, says Leo. No problemo. I'm really loving the new house you picked for us, Don, says Raph. Hurt, as Slash now attacks all the turtles who jump out of the way. Leo swipes at him with his katana blade. Not good, guys. Slash looks out at a really awesome-looking art panel. We see the silhouettes of all four turtles in the colors of their bandanas and Slash looking on at them. He throws a right cross punch at Raphael, who ducks out of the way as it smashes concrete. Whoa, I think you just made it matter, Leo! As Raph jumps out of the way as he's hit and then knocked back onto his shell, crashing through a crate by Slash. Okay, enough of this! As Donatello goes to attack him again, he grabs onto his bow mid-strike. Disarming Donatello and throwing him back into his other three brothers, Leo ducks out of the way as he throws the staff right at Leo's head, and it goes through three feet of concrete. Leo jumps out of the way by doing sort of a, a phoenix kick in the air. This is not good at all. Leo, now the only one that's standing as the others are trying to get up as Slash attacks. On Burnow Island, we see Baxter Stockman. It looks like the office overlooking the build of the Technodrome. So let me understand this, Mr. Allen. I leave New York for a few mere weeks, and already you've experienced a major systems failure and a specimen escape. And now you say the specimen is running rampant through the city and has garnered the attention of both the press and the authorities, suffice to say? This displeases me greatly. I understand, Dr. Stockman, but uh, we're working to make all the necessary repairs here, and we're monitoring the news reports of uh, Specimen 6 closely. 
Monitoring the problem and resolving it are hardly the same thing, Mr. Allen. Can I assume you have a contingency plan in place to capture this creature, or at least short of that, establish plausible deniability for stock gen? Yes, we we have agents looking, but we haven't found anything yet, so there's nothing to uh, connect specimen six to us, to stock gen, sir, just like with the, the turtles we lost. We can see that uh, right behind right behind Alan is uh, two rock soldiers who are just armed to the teeth, kind of giving him a scowl. Well, at least the latest escapee does what it's designed to do. Perhaps those other four won't be as lost for long, and maybe we'll recover that blasted rat as well. As much as I detest the thought, I'm relying on you to stay on top of things. Krang has me fully occupied with his special project, and I don't expect that I'll be returning to the office soon. As it is, my myriad responsibilities here are becoming time-consuming, and now it appears the General may have something markedly bigger in the works. We look down on a picture of the android body of General Krang talking to just an army of soldiers, and rock soldiers and all that. One of the rock soldiers speaks... The troops are ready for review, General Crane, sir. Very well, Sergeant Gradator. Listen up, all of you. I am through messing around with our enemy. The time has come to show those pitiful cretins once and for all what true power looks like. Soon we will mount an all-out offensive against the rebellious neutrino scum in their very own capital, Samar City. We will kill them, and we will stand and crush them where they cower. Understand, time runs out and my patience wears thin. Either we decimate the rebels in short order, or our mission is a failure. And I refuse to accept failure. Oh, Crank, Crank, Crank. His legion shouts his name as a general gives them his General Patton-like speech. Back to April's apartment. This is wrong. But, Doctor, now that you say my husband is the real father of my child, how can you be certain that I'm the real mother? Splinter looks on as his, as uh, April is talking to uh, Casey while he's watching his stories. The guy should have been back by now. Something just doesn't feel right, says April. I'm done sitting around worrying. I'm going to go find them, says April. Casey, I'll drop you off at the arena on the way. No way, April. I'm going with you. But no buts about it. You're tough and all, but this ain't the kind of thing you can do by yourself. Trust me, says Casey. Are you sure? I mean, it's your first game back. I know how hard you've been working for a chance to play again. Hey, I missed a bunch of games already this season, so what's one more, right? Besides, I feel better knowing those green dorks are okay. I'll kick all their stupid butts myself for making me miss my game. Splinter, I believe it's best that I remain here. My sons may return and require my assistance. Thank you both. No need to thank us, says April. We're a team, right? Back in the sewers, where all four turtles are fighting Slash. Okay, guys, just like with Shredder, we do this together. He smashes down. Kawam! Gah! Raph jumps out of the way. This has got to be the thing from Stockgen, says Donatello. You think, Donnie? What is your first clue, Brainiac? I'm serious, Raph. Do you really think that it's a coincidence that this thing found us here? Something tells me it's doing what it was programmed to do. And if it was able to find us now... It'll find us again. And if we run, we're only delaying the inevitable. I think that we need to end this here and now. No way. This isn't Shredder. He can't help what he is. Someone else made him the same way as us. Maybe, Mikey, but we can't let it go back to tearing up the city. Then maybe we can catch it or knock him out or something. I'm telling you, if we don't end this thing, yeah, it's going to end us. And I'm just trying to be realistic, not cool. Uh, for once, I'm with the geek. As he slashes and Donatello goes up, and Raphael goes down, avoiding the slash. Come on, Leo, we're better than that, says Mikey. I I see what's Don saying, but but maybe we can stop it with anyone else getting killed. Just follow my lead and work together, he says to Mike as he jumps. Father showed me a sleeper hold once. Leo jumps on top of him and crosses his legs underneath the uh, underneath the neck of Slash, and then just pulls backward, arching his back as best he can, since he's a turtle. I'll just need to modify it a little bit. Earth Ock me, says Slash. Yow! What is this, a frickin' rodeo? I just hope this plan isn't bull, says Donnie. Yeah, that's it. Keep it coming. The turtles all strike him while he's in the sleeper hold by Leo, who's using his legs as leverage to close off the blood flow to his head as he's falling down. Raph punches him straight out in the beak. 
Mike hits him with the nunchucks right in his leg to knock him down to the ground. Just a little more, says Leo, as he lumbers down to the ground. He's almost out. Just as he does that, he comes up with a big bravado and throws everybody off. Uh, guys, we gotta... Keep it coming. Oh, no! Slash comes up in front of Leo, who's been disarmed, and he just punts him and kicks him, and hoof! He hits the wall. He reaches down to pick up Michelangelo by the back of his shell. Turtle kill. Yeah! He gets hit in the face with a throwing star as he picks up Mikey, and he drops him to the ground. Leo looks on and says, No! This has to stop! Back to Casey and April, who are in the van, tire fixed now, still a big slash mark upon the back of the yellow van. Turn here, April. My phone's GPS says that's it right there. Wow, it's a lot more dilapidated than I was expecting. Yeah, it's kind of a dump. Seems abandoned and really quiet. Do you think the guys are in there? I don't know. There's only one way for us to find out for sure. And I'm keeping these with me while we do. He's got his mask on and his hockey stick. Come on, Gretzky. Let's go find our friends. She pulls him into into the open window when she's got a flashlight. And for the record, if I have to go into a spooky old church to look for mutant turtles who are possibly being hunted by a rabid science experiment, I'm really glad that I'm doing it with you. Yeah, thanks, I think, says Casey. Back to Leo, facing off against Slash as everybody else is, is down. Turtle hunt. I told you. Just stop. This doesn't have to continue. What do you want? Kill turtle. Pain, stop, says Slash. Please, listen to me, says Leonardo. He flashes back to a lesson from, from Master Splinter. I have always taught you that violence is a last resort. That only in defense of your own lives must you ever contemplate it as a solution. Life, above all things, is sacred. As Leo faces off against Slash again, he sees Slash's face going and just roaring at him. Nobody has to die. We don't want to hurt you. Really, we're from Stockgen too. We're we're just like you. He swipes and says, Kill! Leo's thrown back as he does a flip to get out of the way and gets grazed by the shell. Damn it, listen to me. I know you can't help what you're doing. I know it, but you have to understand, I won't let you hurt my brothers, says Leo. Oh my god, Leo! Says April, looking on. April? And in that moment, when she shines... The the flashlight slash jumps on to attack leo who was trying to reason it he says no wait stop and then we see that that they both get tangled into a kind of a ball and then roll over as leo gets up he can see slash who's standing there and he goes one of his katanas stabbed down right through his uh, carapace on his uh, front of his shell and it's going down slash reaches down and he pulls out the sword and he pulls off his mask and he says hurts I, I didn't i didn't mean it i'm sorry and then slash crashes down into the sewer into the water with a black sort of like bubbly leo standing there just in disbelief holding slash mask not understanding just what has happened but knowing that that's not how he wanted it to go down the next day we see this is the new turtles basement lair where casey and april and splinter are there and Donnie and Raph are there all bandaged up after fighting Slash, and they're kind of cleaning up. Man, this place seemed a lot less grimy before we brought the lights down here. Just wait until I get the generator running. Then we'll be able to see every little speck of dust. Oh, joy, says Raph. By the way, where are Leo and Mikey? I haven't seen them since you guys got back today. Mikey went to grab some pizza, and Leo's downstairs. He said he needed to do some training and meditating. Poor thing. I guess it's... Taking it pretty hard, huh? Maybe at first, but to tell you the truth, he seems kind of unfazed by the whole thing. Really? That seems odd. I never figured Leo for the cold-hearted type. Just telling you what I saw, April. What about Mikey? Is he holding up okay? Mikey was pretty quiet when he took off. I think he was hoping for proof that Slash survived, but with a wound like that, well... Hey, it ain't like any of us are happy about what happened. But I mean, it wasn't like Leo meant for it to happen, you know? Mikey gets always too sensitive about these things, if you ask me. Raphael, do not speak so of your brother. Michelangelo is a kindly soul. He has been this way through two lifetimes. His empathy for others is a virtue, not a flaw. He simply seeks out the goodness in others that is so innate in himself. He only wishes to love and be loved. We see a picture at Rupert's Pizzeria, and there's a, a note on top of a pizza, and it says Mikester. 
Mikester, hey amigo, I don't think I can deal with the kind of stuff that follows you and your bros. I'll keep the pizzas coming though. Woody. You see Michelangelo, also bandaged up in a hooded sweatshirt, with a tear coming out of his eyes, he comes back with his Rupert's pizza. Back to Splinter. In a world as jaded and cynical as this one, Michelangelo's unbridled optimism is to be celebrated, not discouraged. And as for Leonardo, do not mistake his discipline for callous detachment. Whatever has become of the creature you battled, I am certain Leonardo too wishes things had ended differently. Shows Leo, cross-legged in the basement, doing some meditation, also bandaged up. He's got his uh, sword in front of him, the one that uh, scored the killing blow. And uh, with, with that, it, it's got Slash's mask tied around the hilt of the blade. You must understand, though, your brother's blood, like yours, runs cold. He is no more cold-hearted than any of you. But he is ninja, and his spirit is strong. Epilogue. We can see Slash release his body, and he uh, comes up underneath the bridge on, on the shore. Wake up! I said wake up! A mutant foot kicks him in the head. Rrr. That's it, big boy. Slow and easy. They thought they killed you, huh? Yeah, somebody made the same mistake with me. Idiots. All of them. That's right. You remember me, don't you, from them stinking labs? They put my blood in you. I can smell it. Oh, that ooze crap, too. Pretty soon, there's going to be more remembering going on for a lot of people. Trust me, the hurting kind. They messed with our blood and turned us into hunters, then left us for dead. The first freaking chance they got, right? Well, the hunters ain't dead, and the hunt ain't over. Slash pulls himself up. Hunters. We can see a vial of what looks like blood in, in Hobbs' hand. Yeah, hunters, me and you, big boy. And if they think our blood's the only thing they gotta worry about, they got another thing coming. Like, let's get out of here. We got places to be and people to kill. The blood has a has something on it that says Splinter. So it looks like it was taken from Splinter as Hob has it. He stands there with his eye patch and his trench coat, beckoning for Slash to follow him. And that's the end of issue 16. Hi, this is Francois Chow. I am the Shredder from Secret of the Ooze. And uh, it's been a pleasure for me to talk to Justin and Eric on Epic Tales from the Sewers. It's been great, guys. The Fugitoid Micro Series from IDW, written by Paul Alar, with art by Paul McCaffrey, colors by John Paul Bowd, and letters by Sean Lee. This takes place immediately after issue 16. We start off with the cover, which is a beautiful cover by David Peterson, which is the Fugitoid. A little bit different than we're used to seeing him. It's all in gold with green green eyes and all that. You start off with a page of the Fugitoid, just a full robot body version. I've always thought of myself as a good man, a man who knows how to do the right thing. But it's easy to do the right thing when evil is an abstract notion, when courage and sacrifice are theoretical concepts. But over the past two years, I've seen more evil than I could have ever imagined. It has become part of my daily existence. Am I still a good man? A man who does the right thing? I honestly don't know. Two years ago. I've been a scientist my entire life. It used to bring me such joy. Okay, Dr. Honeycutt. I'm shutting down the fire so we can test the alloy effects on skin tissue. The thrill of discovery of starting with nothing and creating something new and wonderful. We can see here that the Fugitoid is in a room completely full of fire, holding this uh, cube, it looks like. Like Sal, one of my first creations, the robotic construct controlled by my mind, designed to change shapes and forms, allowing us to test other creations. You see him actually forming into what looks like one of these aliens with elven ears. He was built for discovery, focused solely on expanding knowledge. I like to think that we have that in common. The alloy is completely heatproof, harmless, and with that final test, I think we can declare this project a success. Honeycutt, you can see the, the scientist looks like a, uh, a middle-aged man with a uh, goatee beard and uh, some large elf ears kind of pointing out. He's wearing a blue scientist jacket. And he's sitting in a chair and removing some sort of uh, cerebral-looking device from his head. Even when I first arrived here, after Crane conscripted me, I still loved my work. I thought I was helping save his race, but then I discovered his true plans. Now we go to Dr. Honeycutt standing with uh, two of his 
assistants, one with the name Det- Badge Karn and the other one Rebus. That was incredible! Sal's an amazing adventure invention, Dr. Honeycutt! This is a place where amazing things happen, says Karn. It's always the way we can assume neutrino form in its skin, its hair, simulate fabrics, it... Well, it's severe limitations. Neutrino form drains the power pretty fast. You still need the robot to form... T- robot form to recharge. I'd love to keep it working on it, improve the power system, explore new applications, but... Krang has other priorities. As he looks on as a giant rock soldier looks down on the production of a technodrome. Important priorities. We're here doing good work, says Karn. Honeycutt's not so convinced. Right. You know, we see Krang look, looking at a uh, screen communicating with Baxter Stocker. And severe staffing issues. I'll need to hire more scientists. More lab assistants. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is the animal testing. If you want to circumvent the Animal Welfare Act, that's fine. But that added risk means that we'll have to renegotiate. Stop bouncing around between excuses, Stockman. I'm paying you to reduce headaches, not create more. Fix your problems and finish the job. I have enough idiot scientists working for me here, says Crane. Isn't that right, Dr. Honeycutt? He says as Honeycutt comes up on him. I, I just came to inform you that the titanium alloy test was successful, General Crane. We can start mass fabricating it for the Technodrome. It could also revolutionize medicine. Manufacturing space exploration and possibilities are quite limited for what research is costing. There's only one application that matters. Right. One application that matters. Terror, war, genocide. I should have done something. I was so close to him and for so many months. But instead... He looks on a report that says casualty projection 3.3 billion. Why are you still here, Honeycutt? I need nothing. Flashback to him. Looks like he's standing there, father and son. And he's holding on to a... Kind of like a a young boy with brown hair. Hexa and... You know this, Ellie. Parsonon. Excellent. And you're going to help Crane conquer them all? I... It's bedtime, buddy. Why don't you head on inside? He goes inside. Looks like his mother's behind him. She's got... uh, Short-cut blonde hair and also the same elven ears, wearing kind of a red gown. She looks out on him. He's kind of painstakingly looking out at the stars. All his friend's parents work for crying. All his neighbors, all his teachers. He talks to his friends and hears things, some of which are true. She puts his hand on, his, on her shoulder. I know, Mara. I guess I just thought that he was smarter than that. He's six years old. Six and he's exposed to evil on a daily basis. I... I don't know what you expect me to say to that. Neither do I. It's the same topic we've been dancing around for months, ever since we were abducted and brought here. I was conscripted. Conscripted? Come on, it's me. I talked to my friend again today, the one who knows those people. Those people who want to help us. Myra, we need to talk to them. We need to... Myra, stop. What are you saying? It's so dangerous. Krang would find us. He would send that psychopath Granitor after us. You don't go into the same place every day. You don't know. I see evil when I see it. And I know the way it spreads. The way it infects like it's infecting our son. Fighting evil is never easy. It can be painful and ugly. But it's the right thing to do. Isn't it? As she holds on to him. And she looks him straight in the eyes. The next day we can see him over at, at his computer screen. It says 3,421 files deleted. I still wasn't sure. Was this the right thing to do? Was fleeing the best way to fight back? But I loved my wife. We see him packing up Sal, the uh, the golden robot with the green eyes. So I agreed. As the three of them, they wake up their son, and then they head out into the wilderness behind some trees, now dressed in kind of green fatigues and carrying all their worldly possessions. Dr. Honeycutt, welcome to the Resistance! As they welcome him on, and his family onto the back of a truck, 20 months ago, in sort of a underground uh, bunker that you can see surrounded by a forest. We found ourselves in an abandoned research facility now run by the Neutrino Resistance. I was back among my own people. They were thrilled to have my scientific knowledge and equally thrilled to keep it from Krang. Our host put me to work building an interdimensional portal. Krang had a gateway to Earth, but the rebels wanted level playing field. We had done the right thing. Escaped Krang, fled back to the Neutrino, joined the Resistance. I thought we were safe. I thought it was enough. But I should have known better. He shows they're working on some sort of drone where they have, uh, sending something through the portal. 
it explodes and uh, trying to go through the portal. Even with these adjustments, the portal still only works at about 60% of the time. That's not good enough. Well, obviously, we've been at this half the night, Felix, and I'll go back through the data tomorrow. We should be ready for another round of testing in two to three weeks. Three weeks! Two to three. I wish I had the luxury of patience, Honeycutt, but some of us are trying to win a war, not prove a theorem. I understand what's at stake if... I don't think you do. All of a sudden, there's a giant explosion. Krang, you found us. We both look very concerned. A whole bunch of attack ships are going, and they're just peppering the the bunker with with uh, bombs. They're going through. We need to get out of here now. I have to get my family. You can't. They're locked in. What? The lab section... If When the lab section is compromised, the living quarters locked down. It's a safety protocol. We have to... Let, let them burn? What's the override? There has to be an override. In the command center, which is that way. Well, that, then I'm going that way. Those flames will kill you. You won't survive. Not in this body, as he looks over on Sal. Honeycut, you can't. The fire is spreading too fast. Your body will burn and you'll be trapped in here. I know. Now go. Honeycut sits down in the chair with his uh, head helmet on. The Cerebro thing to transfer his consciousness into Sal. So Sal is uh, now walking in through the flames. Sal being impervious to the flames, this isn't going to bother him. So he's walking through. The other gentleman has taken off. And we can see all of the uh, living quarters. The people are trying to get out. Why won't you open? Open, Mom! It's okay, Ellie. We're, we're going to get out of this. Open the doors. Override! Override! Does, does that do it? We see that Honeycutt is trying to open the doors frantically. Just trying to get them to get out into the forest. Then finally he gets it, and he can see that his family is out. This is Sergeant Granitor. That's most of them. Do it now before they're scattered. I'll take my men and look for Honeycutt. As the ships go over, we can see his wife and his son and a whole bunch of others. And they're just vaporized from the bombs that drop from these ships. Terrible. Honeycutt witch witnesses the whole thing from his monitor in the control room. There was nothing I could do but stand there for a while while my family... I made my way back to the lab to try to escape. Only a 60% chance it would work, but it didn't have much of a choice. Inside the base now, the uh, stone men are coming. That's Honeycutt's robot. No, that's, that's Honeycutt. When I saw Graniter and his men, I wanted to tear them apart. I wanted to hear them scream like they made Mara scream. I didn't care if I died trying, but if I did that, Krang would win. There would be no one to stop him. Follow the robot. Sir, the mission. The robot is the mission. So I decided to survive. <laughs> the portal opens up with uh, the fugitoid and two, uh, three rock soldiers following him onto the streets of New York City. Are you fellas promoting a movie? Look at those costumes! Fugitoid then takes this chance to uh, convert into a normal-looking human in a blue um, zip-down sweatshirt with some with some blonde hair. And when, when you see him, he doesn't have the regular neutrino ears. He has regular human ears. So there I was, alone in the most crowded city I had ever seen. Eighteen months ago, Baxter Stockman talks to Krang. I knew Krang would be looking for me, using every option he had available. He's a fugitive android, Dr. Stockman. We labeled him Fugitoid. He's smart, wily, and violent, and he has information I need. So tell your freaks and thugs to be on the lookout. Boop. And he stops on his uh, video transmission. So, Dr. Stockman's talking to Chet. I really dislike that man. Yeah, but, 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 Fugitoid Android? Fugitoid? That's clever, huh? Huh. Well, in any case, how hard will it be to find a robot in Manhattan? Present day. Fugitoid. In the alleyway. I've been here more than a year and a half. Still alive and still free, for what that's worth. My first months here were extraordinarily painful. I was mourning my family, mourning my old life, and slowly coming to terms with my new robotic form. I had been willing to sacrifice my body, even if it meant that saving my family. To lose my family and become trapped on my own creation, it was almost more than I could take. Only one thing was certain. I knew that I had to stop crying. It was why I survived. It's what kept me going. But still, how could I? A lone, grief-stricken scientist stranded on an alien world and cursed with the body of a shape-shifting robot. Then I realized my robot body wasn't a curse. Not at all. As Honeycutt, I couldn't get near Krang, or anybody he knows, but in this body. 
Uh, hi, I'm Chet Allen. He's uh, expecting me. Mr. Stockman, I'm he here to apply for a job. Stupid, damaged voice box. I could give myself a new look, a new identity. I could go anywhere, march right into the belly of the beast, spy and saboteur. Here you go, little splinter. What we're going to learn so much from you. But I still couldn't do it alone. To do the real damage, I needed allies. There would be good people at Stockman Lab, people who would have helped if they'd known the truth. I could invest in them, but I couldn't get them involved. I couldn't put more in danger. We see that uh, Chet Allen is actually talking to April O'Neil. Yes, it sounds like we're on the same page, but I think we could definitely help each other. Instead, I reached out looking for help, looking for people who weren't innocent. I found a group that was willing to help me, willing to support my new branch of the Resistance here on Earth. They're not pleasant people. I have no illusions about that. But Krang is evil, and he killed so many in my family. If he isn't stopped, he'll kill countless more. My wife was right. Fighting evil was never easy. It's painful and ugly. Sometimes you have to make compromises. Where is he? Where's the rat? We see Chet being shaken down by Leonardo, possibly from one of the earlier issues. Then we see Chet walking up with the two ninjas that lead him to Master Shredder, because we know Chet was the mole. So if these people can take Krang down, then it's the right thing to do, isn't it? And that's the end of the Fugitoid issue. Yikes! This could be the end! Are you talking about Slash, the twisted mutant turtle from Dimension X, latest member of the Evil Foot Clan, or Triceraton, Shredder's mutant enforcer? Oh, well, uh, no. Well, surely you don't mean Mondo Gecko, the skateboarding good guy lizard, or Fugitoid, your whacked out robotic buddy with the short circuits. So, what's the problem? They left the anchovies off my ice cream pizza! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles From Playmates! It's pizza time. And now, in a segment that we call Pizza Time, where we discuss any Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle or pizza-related food, I give you Pizza Time. For this episode, I wanted to go with something that was a little more appropriate to uh, some of the foods from the story. So it was uh, vegetables and rice that Splinter was making. So we have the lean, mean, and green. This makes about one 12-inch pizza. The turtles always thought the cheeseless pizza was a bogus idea, until Master Splinter whipped this one up, inspired by his Japanese heritage. Toppled, topped with crumbled tofu and crammed full of vibrant flavors, it satisfies all the requirements for a radical pie, and it's the perfect thing to serve when vegan friends come over down to the layer. Ingredients. Cornmeal or flour for dusting. Extra virgin olive oil for greasing. One large head of broccoli broken into bite-sized florets. Thick stems discarded or saved for another use. One pound ball pizza dough, homemade or store-bought. Vegetable oil for brushing. One large garlic clove, thinly sliced. One 14-ounce container, extra firm tofu, drained, patted dry, and crumbled. Sesame oil, soy sauce, and a pinch of red pepper flakes. Lighten it up, dudes. You can use whole wheat pizza dough if you like. Instructions. Place your baking stone in the middle rack of the oven and preheat to 500 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 30 minutes. Then turn on the oven to broil. Dust a pizza peel or inverted baking sheet with cornmeal or flour. On a baking sheet, preheat the oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit with a rack in the middle position. Lightly coat with a heavy-duty rimmed baking sheet with olive oil. Step 1. Bring a large pot of water to a boil. Fill a medium bowl with ice water and place it nearby. Step 2. Drop the broccoli in the boiling water and let it cook for 2 minutes. Then use a slotted spoon to transfer the broccoli to the ice water so that it's set and the color stop cooking. Drain well. Step 3. Stretch or roll the dough onto a 12-inch disc and place it on the prepared pizza peel or baking sheet. Brush the dough lightly with vegetable oil, then scatter it on the, scatter on the sliced garlic, blanched broccoli, and crumbled tofu. Step 4. Drizzle a little sesame oil on top and sprinkle lightly with soy sauce. Shimmy the dough from the peel to the hot baking stone and transfer to the baking sheet or the oven. Step 5. Bake until the crust is golden, about 6-8 to eight minutes on the baking stone or 10-15 to 15 minutes on the baking sheet. Step 6. Remove the pizza from the oven, let it rest for 5 minutes. Then, finish with the crushed red pepper flakes. Slice and serve, dudes. This is your lean, mean, and green pizza time. Cowabunga, dudes! Thank you for listening to the Epic Tales from the Sewers podcast. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. This podcast has no affiliation with Eastman, Laird, 
Mirage Studios, IDW Studios, Archie Comics, or Nickelodeon Studios. This podcast is a member of the Dorkening Podcast Network. Check out thedorkening.com for other podcasts. Epic Tales from the Sewers is recorded by Justin Cooper and Eric Will. Do you have a hankering for horror knowledge? We have such sights to show you. Do you require raging retro reviews? Do you desire discussions with devastatingly dashing dorks? To have a free The Dorkening Podcast Network has nearly 30 shows to satisfy all of your nerdy, geeky, and dorky needs. From horror reviews and celebrity interviews... Hi, I'm Adam Green, the director of the Hatchet Films and the star of Policy. Hi, this is Dominic Pace, who played the bounty hunter Gecko from The Mandalorian. Hi, I'm Mike Price. I'm a writer on The Simpsons. I co-created Epis for Family. Hi, guys. This is Dee Wallace from E.T. and Cujo. Hi, my name is Grando Mitsutake, director of Gun Woman and Karate Kill. Hi, this is Samantha Newark, the voice of Jem and Jerrica from the original Jem and the Holograms cartoon series. As well as nostalgic trips into the past, pop culture, the latest in entertainment news, and so much more. Featuring a variety of shows and hosts that will simultaneously enrage, enlighten, and entertain you. Check out the Dorkening Podcast Network. My mom says I'm cool. Available on iTunes, Spotify, thedorkening.com, and wherever fine podcasts can be found. It took me ten years to make the perfect man cave. And then we took it over. And we made it into the multiversal chamber. Then I started my own podcast. And we took that over too. And we're the co-host, the Multiverse Kids. Yeah, and I'm the dad, the geeky dad. And every week, we what? We review the movies, shows, and books. Games and toys. Yeah, and sometimes we even have a special guest. So, join us every week on the Geeky Dad Podcast. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. We have very active lifestyles. It's not all wandering the countryside aimlessly or scaring passing motorists. And we all love a good cup of joe. And there's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds Coffee is my guilty pleasure. Bold, robust, delicious. It's coffee that can wake the dead. (laughs) With over a dozen different roasts and flavors, Deadly Grounds can satisfy the most finicky of coffee addicts. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. 